Welcome. We are ready to actually start building this thing. So I've got these stakes laid out. That straight line you're looking at, that's where the base of this thing's going to go. And I'm building this thing standing straight up in the air. The bottom will actually be on the left side and the sides will be at the top. And eh, we'll go over that in a minute. I'm going to use this laser to go ahead and rough in the elevation without having to flatten all this dirt, which my, I don't think my friend wants me to touch it. I'm just going to place these boards where they need to go so the laser helps me just get them to a rough height. And then I can come back with another, the laser again and use a story pole to set them at the precise height. So there it is set up the second time. And the story pole walking through, you can see the first one, two, and three are really good. And the last three start to go off a little bit. I think it's because the string line started touching one of them when I was roughing it in. No big deal. And I was able to get them all leveled out pretty easily. So now we're going to take this C channel, and I am going to be welding the members to this C channel, but it's not a part of the boat where I'm placing it. I'm simply using it as a straight edge. It's about 9 inches wide, which is perfect for a nice flat surface to get this thing started. So I beveled the edges so I can get a full penetrating weld when I weld these two things together. They're about 20 feet long each, and I needed to square this one up. It was not good. And then I went ahead and gave it a bevel too. Then I took a string line and this will allow me to straighten the two pieces up together. I already know they're flat because the bases underneath them are flat. I just need to make sure that they're straight. So I clamp the string line on and I use this uh, gauge block. And see that distance? I just make sure it's that same distance all the way around and all the way from one end to the other. And I can go back and start welding. So I go ahead and tack both sides and then I grind those tacks, the start and stops, because sometimes when you light up on a tack it's too cold. You need to get it ground down so you can go back with a root pass. So I ran a 6010, pushed it all the way down and then ground that smooth so I could run a hot pass with a 532 6010. Just going back over it with a couple of cover passes so I can grind it up smooth and have a nice flat surface to build on. I've had a lot of people ask you know what exactly are we building, what's this thing look like so I made this drawing this morning to give you a a little bit of a visual of what we're going after. So this is the actual base of the barge. These long columns, that's that 8-inch pipe we picked up about a month ago. And then in between are 5 by 10 3 16 steel plates. And then up here on the sides of the barge is quarter-inch plate, about 18 inches tall. And that gap right there I'm running the cursor along, that's going to be 9-inch C-channel welded on top of them. And then up here, the cabin itself is going to be with front and rear decks respectively in between those two pipes. So I've decided to build this thing standing on end instead of doing it a flat surface on the ground where I have to keep something that's 10 foot by almost 40 feet long flat. I'm going to build it standing on end where it's basically just the pipes that are going to sit on that C-channel. The pipes are just a little bit narrower than that C-channel so all I have to do is set one pipe on at a time and let gravity hold it there and put some braces to keep it from falling over and then I can weld each plate in after that. And then there's also going to be bracing going between each pipe uh, to stiffen the bottom and braces going from the walls to the sides of the pipe to keep the walls from caving in and then there will also be braces going left or right for the floorboards to sit on. The generator's been running pretty well. It's burning about half a gallon an hour. It's not too bad. And it turns out it's really not that loud without an exhaust or a muffler on it. But we do have an oil leak coming out of it, and it was a pretty substantial oil leak. By the time I caught it, it was uh, all the way to the bottom of, say, fill line. And that's the culprit right there. That's the shutoff solenoid that sits in that groove. You can see all the gasket material that was on it. Somebody's been in here before, and I think that groove that's cut there is actually for an O-ring. So let's see if I can find an O-ring and get this thing fixed up right. I was able to find one. Perfect fit. Went ahead and wiped off all the old oil to make sure no dirt sticks to it. 
Makes this thing dirty. Filled it up. Check the level. We're ready to start it back up. Use the flashlight. Check for leaks. I didn't see any. We're good to go. So next, I need some braces. Remember we need the stiffeners on the floor. We need the braces on the sidewalls to keep them from caving in. And then the braces to go from wall to wall for the floorboards to sit in. Well, I calculated the cost of angle iron, and, um, about 1200 bucks. So I've got a few extra of these pipes that I only paid 40 bucks for, and it turns out if I cut them lengthways, I can get seven pieces out of them. And then I found a guy locally that can bend them up and turn them into angle iron. They can only charge like four dollars each to bend them. But that's what I'm gonna do is start cutting these things up and turning them into angle iron. I forgot to mention, but I have an 8.2 Detroit diesel. It's a spare for a big red in my other truck. I uh, plan to put it in the boat. I don't know if I'll get it running uh, before this thing actually hits the water, but it is on the long-term plans. I'm going to have a hydraulic pump on the back of it. Running a hydraulic motor prop submerged underwater. Should be pretty cool. Got all of those pieces cut and ready to be turned into angle iron, but the guy won't be open until Wednesday because it's 4th of July weekend. And I had a couple of problems with the air compressors. So that big one, you see it runs, uh, but it won't run the plasma cutter and that compressor at the same time. And I also found that if the tank, you know, had 90 PSI and the motor kicks on to build it back up, it would just not want to go. It would stall and overheat and throw the thermal switch. So anyways, I bypassed it. I'm not using it anymore. So I picked up that gas-powered one and it works pretty good. You can see right here on the face panel of the plasma cutter just how quickly it builds air. I'm impressed. But I also had another problem after cutting all those pieces. And it, it was a lot of cuts. But that brand new gas-powered one I was using, I guess it's not brand new. Uh, I heard a funny noise and that pulley just stopped turning. I assumed the worst and figured maybe it didn't have any oil in it and it did. So I went ahead and started draining the oil anyways because it didn't look that great. So I'm going to get some fresh oil in there and it turns out what the real problem is. is see all the slop in that belt? It should only be about a half inch of play. And the pump does spin freely so that's a good sign. So all we really need to do is put some new fluid in it just because just I want to and get this belt tightened up. So I loosened the mounts on the motor and got it adjusted. And that's what it should look like. To get that tension, all I had to do was loosen the motor mounts and tighten up that bar right there that pushes the compressor away from the engine, giving sufficient belt tension. After giving it some fresh compressor oil, we're back in business. So up next, we're ready to start raising the steel. This beam right here will be the first one, the first piece of the boat that's actually going in the air. And while that's being done, I want to make it clear about why I'm going to college. I know, uh... There might be a misconception that maybe I'm going to college because I think it's going to get me some kind of fancy job or some kind of security or it's what everybody else is doing. But that couldn't be further from the truth. The truth is, is I like tools. And I want to couple all of the tools that I have with an engineer's mindset. That's what I've always wanted to be, an engineer. So that's what I'm going to go do. And I don't have any preconceptions about what I think college is. I already have one undergrad degree, so I've kind of been there, done that. But yeah, I'm ready to expand my mental tool set to go along with all of the tools and experience I've already got. So as you can see, this is the reason why I think it's great to just build this thing standing on end. It was pretty simple just to drop that pipe in place, let gravity hold it there, throw some kickers, and make sure it's plumb with the plumb stick, and until I, you know, dropped the lifting hook down in it, that kind of sucked. But it wasn't too hard to get out because I made a tool to get it out. Run, Ford, run! Well, next up is the five foot by 10 foot sheet. I did cut it a little bit down. That way the pipes are actually gonna be five foot on center. And then after that will be uh, another pipe. Well, I gotta say, the camera is gonna go away for a while. School starts about mid-August. And I've got to get this thing welded together. I've got to flip it over three or four times. We've got to prep it for paint, put paint on it, and buy paint. 
Then I gotta build a wood cabin on top to keep water out. So, only about six weeks time. Yeah, the camera's gonna go away. I may do some shorts. Uh, I don't know, I may update every now and then. But I don't know. I think the next time you guys see this, maybe one or two updates, and then the next one will be on the way to the river. So I could be anchored out in the bay. But yeah, there's no way I can keep editing these videos and taking this many shots and actually get this thing done. And that's really what this is all about, just showing you what it takes to get something like this done. So there it is, folks. The first section. That's about five foot on center, and we're going to do 30 feet. Then two rakes, one at the end and one at the front. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So once the bottom's all in, the sides will go on top like that. You know, that quarter inch plate, and then the 9 inch C channel welded on top of that. And for orientation, that right side is where the cabin will be. So over here on the left side is the water side. And then this is how it's going to be flipped next. It'll go down bottom down and then back up again so I can weld the quarter inch plates on that top side. And then it'll come back over and flip completely upside down. That's where it's going to be uh, grinded, prepped, and painted. Well, I have no idea if I'm actually going to get this thing done or not, but I'm pretty sure it's got good things to come. Thanks for watching.